friends. Today what we are going to be doing is making crystals. So what you're going to need for this is boiling water, borax, and if you don't have borax or you don't want to go out and get it, you can also do this with salt or sugar or Epsom salt. But borax typically works better and makes the largest crystals, so that's what I recommend. And you can find that in any of your like normal laundry detergent aisles at the grocery store. Comes in a box like this. You're going to need pipe cleaners, any shape, any color, just a pipe cleaner. Thread, a dowel or a pencil or a chopstick, just any kind of like long, flat, dowel shaped objects that you can use later. Um, you're going to need food coloring, which is optional, but I recommend it. And a wide mouth jar or something larger than what your pipe cleaner is going to be. And I'll explain that in a little bit. So what I've already gone ahead and done, I've done the first step and what you're going to do is boil some water and I boiled around four cups of water and it just depends on how many crystals you want to make or how large the crystals you want to make. Um, so I just boiled four cups of water and you're going to empty out some borax in there and I usually do about like four or five tablespoons of borax per cup of water. However, there's not like an actual measurement. You usually just boil as much borax that will fit in the water. And what I'm saying by that is you keep stirring until the water is clear and the borax is completely dissolved. So if your borax is completely dissolved in there, um, you just keep adding more. And you don't want it to get cloudy, but you want it to be like a clear water mixture with like a tiny bit of borax compounded at the bottom and by that you're going to have a completely saturated solution so the water is going to be completely filled with borax as much as it can be and that's usually around four or five tablespoons per cup so what i'm working with is four cups of water and about like 20 tablespoons of borax and i went ahead and already added food coloring in it and you don't have to add food coloring your crystals can be like a clear whitish shade if that's what you want or they'll pick up the color of the um, pipe cleaner a little bit, but I went ahead and added some green food coloring because I'm working with green pipe cleaners So I thought that would go well with it So here I have some already boiled water with borax and food coloring and you're gonna take one of your jars So I'm gonna use a can for one of my pipe cleaners and I'm going to use a mason jar for the other one And I'm gonna try and do a time-lapse on the mason jar so we can kind of see what's going on like through the crystallization period. I'm not sure if the time lapse will allow for that, but we're gonna try. So we're just gonna carefully, very carefully pour your boiling water. It should be extremely hot, so be very careful. Pour it into your cups. And again, mine has green food coloring in it, so if you don't, it should be clear. Or whatever color you're working with. And you just fill your solutions, and you're gonna take your pipe cleaners and try to mold them in the most compact way possible. So see, I took mine and tried to roll them in like a little ball almost you don't want it to be a ball you want it to maintain kind of a flat shape but just like a little disc whatever you can do or if you want to get creative you can make little shapes I'm gonna make a K for my name which is Kristen um, to see if that works I don't know we're just gonna try some things out today and you're just gonna take any thread and unroll a little bit you don't want it to be too long because you don't want your pipe cleaner to reach the bottom of your container that has the liquid in it so I'm just gonna cut about seven inches and tie it to the pipe cleaner wherever. And you don't wanna tie it too tightly because if you wanna eventually cut this off, you don't wanna have to wrestle with that. So I just tied mine in a little knot and then you're gonna tie the other end to your long object, you can use a pencil again, anything you have in your house. I'm using a chopstick. And you just go ahead and tie a little knot at the end of it. This one can be as tight as possible. You do not want it to fall off, so make sure it is secure. just like so and it should not be longer than what you're working with 
so I want it to sit about like midway through there so as you can see I'm kind of rolling my chopstick to where it sits pretty much in the middle and I'm just gonna go ahead and dunk it in there and again be very careful this is boiling water and just kind of dunk it a few times make sure it's comfortable in there and make sure there are no air bubbles around it and you're just gonna set it on top like this so it's in the middle there you can't really see through this thick liquid but it's just setting right in the middle you do not want it to touch any of the edges or if you're doing a lot of pipe cleaners in the same container you don't want the pipe cleaners to touch so the pipe cleaners should be completely surrounded by the water solution you do not want it to touch anything else and while I'm doing my K, I'm going to kind of explain the science behind all of this. So what's actually going on when you boil the water is the water molecules are getting further apart because they are getting hotter. And when they get further apart, it allows for the borax molecules to kind of intervene and kind of stick into there. And that's why it dissolves. And when you can't mix any more borax, it's because there is no more space in the water molecules to allow for borax molecules. So essentially it's completely saturated and then you'll see like a little bit of borax start to develop at the bottom of your jar, which is totally okay. You don't want it to be cloudy because then you'll have cloudy crystals, but it's totally okay for the borax to sit at the bottom. That just means that it's completely saturated. Um, and when this is happening, the borax and the water are kind of like one solution. And then once it dries or once it starts to cool down, the water will begin to evaporate and will begin to recondense. And when that's happening, it's pushing out the space that was just originally there for the borax crystals. So they have nowhere to go. And so what they're gonna do is be attracted to the little hairs of a pipe cleaner. So it's gonna stick to the pipe cleaner. And then when one begins to develop on the pipe cleaner, the other borax crystals are attracted to that. So they're gonna begin to grow and stick onto that crystal and form an even larger crystal. And then as that crystalline shape develops, it's taking the borax out of the water molecules which allows more room for the water as it's cooling and so this whole process is what's forming your crystals so it is kind of like a chemistry project um, and you can do it with other solutions as I was saying but borax usually has larger molecules and more like defined crystals so it is better for that but you can do it with salt or sugar it just usually is smaller and if you notice salt and sugar they have very unique shapes and that's because a crystal is just any solid that has a repeating shape, it's a solid figure with flat edges and a repeating shape, a crystalline structure, um, and you usually don't classify things, or you usually wouldn't think to classify like household objects like salt or sugar, but it is a crystal, same as this. Um, and when these come out and they're dry, you'll be able to see like a repeating pattern, hopefully, and a def definite shape. And then this step is optional, but it does create better crystals. I'm going to co lightly cover both of my little jars with aluminum foil or any kind of covering that you want. Because the slower the water cools, the larger your crystals will be. And this is the one that I'm going to time lapse, so I'm going to see it if I can still allow the sides to be shown. But we're going to cover both of them and we're going to let them sit for 24 hours. It's very important that the longer amount of time they let to sit, the larger the crystals will be to form. So don't jostle them, don't mess with them. Let them sit and do their thing for 24 hours. They'll be completely cool. Again, be extremely careful. It is very hot. So just let them cool and do their thing for 24 hours. And then after that 24 hours, you can uncover them. Um, and take the little string out, you can cut the string, and you can look at the crystals, let them sit, and let them completely dry out before you like mess with them because they are very fragile right now. And then after that, you can enjoy your crystal.